moths and butterflies. Some of you may find them creepy, others will think they're interesting. I'd say I have a mix of both opinions. As most people know, moths and butterflies are closely related and they all come under the insect order Lepidoptera. The word Lepidoptera itself is formed from two Greek words, which mean scale and wing. The differences between butterflies and moths aren't always clear, but generally butterflies have club-shaped antennae and fold their wings over their back vertically, whereas moths have more feathered antennae and fold their wings horizontally along their body. There are exceptions, and the line between the two isn't always clear, so the term Lepidoptera is less complicated to use. In some languages, there isn't much of a difference between the term for butterflies and the term for moths. For example, in French, the term for moth translates to butterflies of the night. Lepidoptera have been described as a gateway for children to develop an interest in insects and the natural world, and the presence of a moth or a butterfly can have different and complex meanings in different cultures. Some cultures see Lepidoptera as symbols of death, long life, or they can represent a soul. And the metamorphosis of caterpillar to adult can represent a transformation, such as puberty or a change in society. So please feel free to comment below on what the presence of butterflies or moths means to you. We have a long history of interacting with these creatures through art, books, and even some phrases mention them. For example, the attraction of moths to light has led to the phrase, like moths to a flame. Butterflies even had a role in ancient Egypt belief, and this can be seen in their paintings, like this one, which depicts the afterlife of a scribe. A lot of people ask, why are moths attracted to light? This interaction is known as positive phototaxis, and the reasons for it aren't fully understood. One theory is that some moths would have used the moon to orientate and adjust their path, and to keep them upright by constantly keeping the light above them. Obviously, before urbanisation and electricity, the moon would most likely have been the brightest thing at night in most places. This means that moths that do exhibit positive phototaxis will be affected by modern artificial light sources, such as the light bulbs in your home. In fact, some studies into moth activity in areas with light pollution have shown that artificial light has negative effects on moth development and behaviour. Butterflies and moths are also important pollinators. Many ecosystems rely on pollinators, and we ourselves rely on them for our food crops. They also can act as ecological indicators, meaning we can study them and observe when they react to changes in things such as the climate. If their range or population size is changing, then it is often the case that other invertebrates are changing theirs too. There are ways that human activity is affecting moths and butterflies other than light pollution. Examples include habitat degradation and climate change. And this next quote I've taken from the State of Britain's Larger Moths 2021. And I just wanted to include it here because I think it's so important. The decline of moths and other insects, both in Britain and elsewhere, is clear and demands an urgent response. We do not need to wait for robust global trends or scientific proof of causes of change. The existing evidence is compelling and clear policy pathways have already been identified. We can and should act now. In Britain, expanding, restoring, connecting and creating habitats that support rich arrays of moths and other wildlife, that improve human well-being and that deliver ecosystem services such as carbon storage, flood prevention and cleaner air, is the key to reversing moth declines and confronting the biodiversity and climate crisis. When you consider our cultural and historical connection with Lepidoptera, as well as the importance that insects and other invertebrates have in the ecosystems that we rely on, 
It could be considered dishonourable for us to negatively impact these species through climate change and habitat destruction. It is also a shame that 83% of the human population live in light polluted skies, which is weakening our connection with moths and the natural world. However, the world isn't all bad and I don't want to end this video in a negative way. There are so many brilliant moths out there that you can see and here's a few of my favourites. So this first one is the hummingbird hawk moth, which I've never actually seen, but it is named after hummingbirds because it hovers to feed on tubular flowers. Whenever I see one online that someone's seen, or the other day my friend sent me a picture of one, I'm always quite jealous, so I'd like to see one someday. This next one is the angle shades moth, which is the first moth I learned how to identify, and so it will always be one of my favourites. It has an angled pattern on its wings, which matches its name, and it has camouflage, which makes it look like an autumn leaf. This next one is another day and night flying moth, which is the Jersey Tiger Moth. It has some stripes that look like tiger stripes, hence the name. This species is in the Big Butterfly Count, ran by Butterfly Conservation, and it is spread by 861% from its isolated pocket in Devon since the 1990s. The last one on this list is the Death's Head Hawk Moth, Fit for Halloween and creepy films. It has a school like marking on its thorax and it is actually adapted to seal honey from nesting bees. It can also make a squeaking sound if it's alarmed and I think you can easily find videos of this on YouTube. I might link one below if I found one. The history and symbolism of this amazing moth is really interesting to read about if you go to the Butterfly Conservation website, which I have linked below and it's definitely worth checking out. I hope you found this video interesting, and I definitely recommend reading more into the topic, as I have only given an overview of Lepidoptera species in Britain. I've included some research articles and links to pages in the description that you may find interesting. I've also added my website to the description, where you can find anything from my social media links to the petitions that I want to support. Please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel for more videos like this one, as well as a few vlog style videos. So I'll see you in the next one.